Hi everyone, this is Leo Dodd from uh, First Assembly in Cape May, New Jersey, and I want to say hi to all the uh, guys out there in the New Jersey district. I know we're all getting ready to get together for um, our men's um, fall convention uh, on, in November, and uh, I'm really excited and hopefully be coming up with some guys myself. I'm way down here in the, the the end of New Jersey. Like if you go any further south, you just have to go swimming because there's nowhere else to go. So I feel like I'm in a missions outpost out here sometimes, but uh, it's really great to get together uh, with guys around the district and uh, see what God is doing. So we look forward to seeing you. I uh, wanted to just um, share some thoughts that are on my mind uh, today. Uh, and the thought really is about servanthood. Um, not too long ago, actually it was a couple of years ago, uh, someone sent me a video of a so-called prophet who was saying that um, if the right people didn't get elected in 2018, then God was going to bring judgment on America. And um, I don't know how you feel about that, and I'm not getting into any political stuff today, but I thought, it was this is really interesting. You know, God is waiting for the next election to decide whether he's going to destroy our country or something. And... Um, and I don't think God needs to wait for the next election if he wants to do that. And thank God we live under his grace and mercy. But this really got me thinking about how we think about power. And this is really, really important. Uh, and God has been uh, just ministering this to me actually over the last couple of years. And it just so happens that next week... Um, this will be my sermon topic because uh, I just happened to be pre preaching on this uh, issue. Uh, uh, and so out of this portion of scripture, and I'm in the, the portion of scripture in the beginning of the book of Acts, uh, Acts chapter 1, and I just want to share this with you. Um, and just give me a moment here to get it on my phone. Um, I wasn't actually going to read the scripture, but I thought, why not? I'll read it. And um, so Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to start with verse uh, 4. And uh, and it says, um, And while they were staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized you with water, uh, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, that is a very important question, and I want to get to that. Um, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Um, when I got that video, I started just thinking about, well, how do we, how do we see power in the church right now? And for many, people see power as a top-down thing, right? So right now there's probably people saying, well, if we get all the political stuff set, if we get all the right leaders in place, uh, then we will have power. Um, what's interesting to me is uh, this is the exact question that the disciples asked Jesus. Uh, think about this. They were with Jesus for 40 days, the risen Christ, and they must have thought, this is really incredible. Jesus is alive, and uh, Jesus has all this power, and this is what we've been waiting for. He is the Messiah. We know he's the Messiah now, and uh, we know that the Bible, or, or in their, their case, the Torah, uh, or the Old Testament scriptures, promised that the Messiah would rule and reign the entire world out of Jerusalem. And so what did they ask? They said, Lord, are you going to at this time, are you going to do it now? Are you going to restore the kingdom, right, to to Jerusalem, right? In other words, this is what they're asking. Are we going to Jerusalem to get power, right? Because they thought they're marching into Jerusalem, Jesus is going to take them over, they're going to get seats of honor, and they're all going to rule from the top down, and Jesus is going to, to rule and reign on the earth forever. They, that's what they thought was coming. And Jesus turned it all around. Uh, it's interesting now to me that Jesus used the word power, because that's exactly what the disciples were asking for. They were asking for power, but they were asking for political or worldly power. But Jesus said, no, 
you're not getting political or worldly power, but this is your power. You're going to wait for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you, and then you will be my witnesses. You're not going to go to Jerusalem and rule from the temple or rule from the, uh, the Pilate's house. Uh, you're going to go to Jerusalem. And you're going to be my witnesses. And I'm going to talk about that word in just a second. You're going to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and to the other most parts of the world. So from the beginning, the gospel has included everyone. Uh, there's actually some interesting teaching on the temple here because really I think what Luke is saying is the new temple is the people of God, not a building. Right. Uh, and the people of God filled with the Holy Spirit is really the new temple that we live in right now. And that's that's another teaching for another time. Uh, but um, here they are. They they're they're being told they're going to go into Jerusalem not to be conquerors, but to be witnesses. This word witness came to be synonymous with the word martyr, um, because these men and these women would go and they would proclaim Christ, and many of them would become martyrs for the faith. Stephen was the first one in Jerusalem to become a martyr, and then they spread to Judea and Samaria, and then the Apostle Paul, who um, was Saul, and he was uh, going after Christians, um, uh, was converted, and he became persecuted himself. Uh, the point is this. This is power in the kingdom. Power in the kingdom is not top-down. Power in the kingdom is bottom-up. Power in the kingdom is not ruling over people. Power in the kingdom is servanthood and serving others. The disciples were saying, Lord, we want power, and, and we're ready for it. And Jesus said, oh, you want power? Okay. What I want you to do is wait for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and then I want you to serve and love other people and share the message of the gospel. That's where the power is. There is, in, there is no other way to get God's power. There is no other way. And, uh, and I know there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now if you turn on the news or whatever. And, uh, and a lot of opinions are going around. A lot of people are upset. And a lot of people are, are going crazy over stuff. Uh, but here's the thing. Sometimes I think... We as a church have traded worldly power for God's power. And there is no way to get there is no way to get God's power but to serve and to love other people and to spend time in his presence and and move with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So uh, whatever's going on out there, whatever's going to happen in the next few months, don't worry about it because that's not where your power is. That's not where my power is. Um, our power is still in the same place. And it's amazing to me that as Christians, we're still asking the same question, aren't we? We're saying, when are we going to get power? When are we going to be in charge? And Jesus says, you want power? You're going to serve. You're going to love other people. You're going to lay down your life. And you're going to wait for the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. So I just want to give you that today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you guys in November. God bless.